from the Coast View studio right here in beautiful coastal Mississippi. Welcome to Coast View, the show that every single day celebrates the men and women who are making coastal Mississippi such a great place to live, work, and play. Uh, I have a quote I want to share with you before we go to the first guest uh, of today, and it's a good one. And here it is. It's from Paul Bear Bryant. It's not the will to win that matters. Everyone has that. It's the will to prepare to win that matters. You know, owning a restaurant requires entrepreneurs, no matter where you do business, certainly here in coastal Mississippi, it, it, it requires entrepreneurs who have incredible focus to win. Uh, we've talked to several incredible uh, coastal Mississippi, I call them uh, restaurant entrepreneurs, uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, I've really enjoyed my visits with them here on Coast View. And we'll, we'll talk more in a second about why that's so important. Um, and we've learned a lot about how to succeed for them. And I don't care what these, you know, these lessons, they will apply to you whether you're, whether you're in some other career or in the restaurant career, uh, a restaurant business. We've learned that creating amazing restaurants in coastal Mississippi from the people that I've talked to, that they possess some really, I would say, common traits that certainly demonstrates that they are out there to win. Here's, I've listed them, and here are a few of the traits that, that have stuck out to me over the course of these conversations. Uh, first, they're focused, unbelievably focused. Uh, second, they're determined. And I like to use the word doggedly determined. That's that's a phrase that always applied well to me in, in my pursuit of my career, doggedly determined. Uh, they have a vision, and they have people around them that buy into that vision, and their vision becomes their mission. And they are they are really on a mission. Oftentimes, I call them monomaniacs on a mission. Uh, they have serious work ethic. Uh, owning a restaurant is extremely hard business, hard work. Owning your own business is hard work, but owning a restaurant is especially difficult. There's very long hours, so they usually get up early and they go to bed late. What they do, they will describe in most cases as a labor of love. They're incredibly focused on customers. Then they're focused on quality. They're focused on the quality of the service they provide. They want, they want, they want customers to leave there with an incredible experience because they know that the key to success in their business is customers have to come back. They know this. They know to be, that to be successful, customers have to come back for repeat business, uh, re repeat visits. So they, they really focus on building consistency of their brand. And that's hard to do because you have customers, excuse me, you have employees that change. You have social media that throws curveballs at you along the way. Good Lord, if you think about the pandemic. What the, what the pandemic has done to restaurants to add other challenging variables. Ne needless to say, you have to love being in that business to be in the restaurant business. And they're often committed to the community. That, that is a common trait I hear over and over again, that they have a strong desire to give back. It, it's, it permeates who they are and, and their actions as a business. You know, I could go on and on, but we've learned some incredibly dynamic lessons from coastal Mississippi entrepreneurs who have who either ch who have chosen to develop and own restaurants. In many ways, I think of them as artists, that they are contributing their art back to the coast. And when you look at the collection of amazing restaurants that we have here, that they have created, it's one of the reasons why coastal Mississippi is such a great place to live, work, and play. And now I want to I want to invite my next guest and and sort of celebrate. Uh, uh, his accomplishments and what he's contributed to Coastal Mississippi, and welcome Coast to Coast View, Thomas Jennon. How you doing, Thomas? Good, man. Thank you. I'm, uh, it's a little cold this morning, but we can deal with it. Yeah. So where are you? Where are you coming from this morning? Man, I'm actually uh, upstairs at the Blind Tiger in Bay St. Louis. Um, just wrapped up with uh, some folks about a fishing tournament actually uh, this fall, like you know, almost a year away, but. Should be a good yeah. day. So no rest for the weary. I often say on Coast View that if you want something done, find a busy person to do it. That's just the way it works because you've learned how to sort of organize your time. But, it, you know, in a nutshell, you developed and sold Shaggy's. You developed and expanded the Blind, Blind Tiger brand. You opened Marina Cantina in Gulfport, and you're about to open 
Marina Cantina and Ocean Springs. You've done other business ventures along the way. And what I have to say about your sort of your short uh, span of contribution here to coastal Mississippi is, is really wow. Um, you heard at the beginning of these qualities, these traits of, of a successful uh, restaurant entrepreneur. Did these things sound familiar to you? Yeah, they do, man. And, you know, uh, I've been doing, I've been self-employed now since 2002, um, primarily on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And it's a, it's a marathon for sure. And you, you know, I guess like with any business, you have your peaks and valleys and your ups and downs and good times and bad times. But, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an endurance drill is what it is. It, it really is. And I know that. I think a good place to start, and people will be in, will enjoy this part of the conversation. They know Emerald Lagasse. I had the opportunity to get to know him when I was in New Orleans, and of course his wife is from Gulfport. Um, you, but you cut your restaurant teeth working for Emerald Lagasse. So w- what did Emerald teach you about how to succeed? Man, it, I was telling some folks the other day, I worked at his original restaurant on Chapatulas. Um, so late nineties into up until 2002, 2001. And that was the busiest restaurant maybe in America. When I worked there, if you looked at the size and the amount of people we used to serve and man, it was just like 10 of us in there and it was hot and it was hard, but it was fun. We were never slow. We never had a chance. I mean, you went, when you went to work, you better be ready. You know, it was almost like getting ready for a football game and a uh, really tight crew. Um, you know, that's when he was like a rock star, really. I mean, he was all over TV, all over the Food Network. and He would come to town when he could and spend time with us when he could. And it was awesome, you know, and uh, as he grew, things changed a little bit. They renovated the restaurant and um I stayed through that renovation. They renovated the entire building for the 10th year anniversary and uh, moved back to Mississippi and found a local coast woman and just wanted my own place, you know, and um, just started doing what I did there for myself. And uh, but I I missed that place a lot. Um, And it was like smaller was better, so to speak. You know, we didn't have a big giant kitchen. We didn't have all this fancy equipment. I mean, it was like cutting boards, knives, stoves, grills, and fryers, and that was it. And I kind of learned that, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to produce. You have to start with the best you can find, and then you just have to teach people how to reproduce it. And Thomas, Uh, what? and, And, you know, I've never seen anything that I can buy that can beat what we can make. Right. I don't think that exists. Yeah. Hey, Thomas, but, you know, coming back to your early time of sort of being in your own restaurant business, like so many, like thousands of of businesses along coastal Mississippi, uh, Katrina threw a curveball at you and it impacted you professionally and and personally. Tell me about that chapter of your life. Man, Katrina wiped everything out. We, uh, the paid for restaurant got washed across the street. My wife and I's house got wiped, you know, washed, just washed away in Waveland. We lived a block off the beach. Um, luckily, <clears throat> I had just opened a steakhouse um, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, you know, we had a place to go and we had a place to live. We had an, a, a company apartment up there. So for us, we never had to do the FEMA cottage. We never had to do, you know, the mother-in-law's garage or anything like that. Um, so we were in Baton Rouge after Katrina. And then I told my wife, I said, I'm ready to go back to the coast. I want to find a waterfront piece of land and I want to sell cheeseburgers and boiled crawfish and drink beer while I'm teaching people how to make po'boys and, you know, just fun, casual stuff. And, uh, that's kind of where Shaggy's was born, um, right there in the Pass Harbor. And then, uh, I just kind of, you know, now... It's not about, I mean, obviously I'm not in the high end white tablecloth restaurant sector anymore, but now it's almost like we want to create a place where you can hang out, eat, visit, maybe catch a little live music, let your kids run around, um, casual, but not out of the bag, processed, imported, you know, still 
focus on quality, keep it simple, and deliver a good product to the people that come here and live here. And you were right. I mean, without our local customer base, the tourists can't make up for that. So yeah. granted, I mean, there's a balance there, right? Spring and summer, a lot of tourists, a lot of people that come here every weekend. But uh, I want to thank all of my loyal customers because, you know, without them, it's it's uh, it's over. So let's do this. We're coming to the end of this segment, but it's interesting that along the way you learned that scaling multiple restaurants was going to be one of the keys to success, and you did it very early on. And when you had the opportunity to come back to the coast and you opened up Shaggy's and Past Christian, you had vision for where you wanted to go with that. Ultimately, you sold Shaggy's. You went into the, uh, the the Blonde Tiger concept, which has been very successful for you. And then you used all that you learned up to that point to to open up Marina Cantina and Gulfport. It's a great story. And uh, the concept I love, incidentally. So when we come back, we'll continue the conversation with Thomas Jenin, and uh, we'll find out the rest of the story. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to Cushy. We have Tom, Thomas Jenin with us today. He has developed concept, the Blind Tiger, Shaggy's. Um, he sold Shaggy's, but then, you know, of course, went on to the Blind Tiger, Marina Cantina, and Gulfport. Soon we'll be opening Marina Cantina in Ocean Springs. And I'm just enjoying sort of telling his story, and, and which is one of determination and focus and vision and, and uh, a monomaniac on a mission, which you've got to be if you're going to be a restaurant entrepreneur, like I mentioned just a second ago. But, Thomas, one of the interesting things is you came – okay, you left working for, for Emerald, came back to you know Mississippi, but you knew going into this that the key to success is not one but more, more than one restaurant. How did you know that scale was something you wanted to do? Man, honestly, you know, it took me uh, 10 years to kind of figure that out. And, you know, what I realized is is if you want to own one restaurant, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have friends that have very successful one restaurant businesses, you know, but they're there all the time. They never leave. Their wife's there. When their kids turn 13, their kids are there working. I mean, you know, so that's really... Um, when I came back from Emeralds, I kind of wanted to be Emerald, you know, like chef coat, high end, fancy, eventually find a bigger building, you know, had some really cool backers, Ben Puckett and John Dane that backed me in that venture. Um, and it, maybe that would have happened, you know, maybe if Katrina wouldn't have hit, that would have happened. I'm not sure. But um, when I went into the casual sector of this industry, you know, it, it was like, you know, I don't have to micromanage. I don't have to live in a kitchen. I don't have to do pre-meal and talk about veal reductions and lamb chops and duck breast and all that. And, uh, man, we started, we just started having too much fun with it. And then, you know, it was kind of like, let's just stick to the waterfront and let's just do another one. And then we did another one. And then, you know, I sold my half of that deal and now we've got four blind tigers two marina cantinas and about to have two more each hopefully over the next few years um but but what i've learned is that you know you hire people that are that are a good fit for everybody else in upper management and even hourly and you just kind of let them go you know and and i don't need to tell people what to do i just need to give them the general idea you know like like we have our own seafood distribution business now. And, you know, so fresh grouper is about to be sent to every kitchen. I'm not going to tell everybody what to do with that grouper, but I'm going to say, let's do a cool sandwich during the day. And then, you know what, y'all come up with whatever you want to do at night. Keep it fun. Keep it fresh. Make it look pretty. Get it to the table on time. And y'all kind of do what you want. So we don't, we don't show up every day and say this is what you're doing here it is i mean we kind of yeah. want our managers and our chefs and our kitchen folks to kind of do what they want to do with it i just want to make sure we keep them on the same path i think i think that's really important because that that's the difference between assigning specifically and there you have to do a lot of micromanaging and the other is just delegating 
And as long right. as people sort of buy into the vision and understand what the quality expectations are and the service expectations are, you probably end up with a better result doing it that way because you're empowering you people. Well, you know? like yesterday, one of our guys we buy a lot of crawfish from over in uh, Mamou, Louisiana, he sent 20 pounds of fresh alligator tail meat to us. I was in Gulfport and uh, wrapping up lunch, and I was like, oh, my God, what are we going to what are we going to do with alligator meat, you know? And two hours later, I get a picture of little bitty pieces of fried alligator with fried dill pickles with like a spicy remoulade sauce. I'm like, I never would have thought of that in 10 years. Would I have ever come up with that idea? And I said, you know what? Roll it. Let's get some feedback on it. I think that could almost be a menu item, you know? And a lot <laughs> of the things that, that we end up doing that's how we end up doing them. It's spontaneous. It's it's kind of, you know, real quick. And it's like, wow, that that's really neat. Let's run with that. What I love about your concepts, is, and we don't have time to go into the, all the details about them, but is that, you know, small plates, a lot of fresh ingredients. Right. Um, it tastes good. It's consistent. I love the in the in casual environment. It sort of defines what Coastal Mississippi is all about. And I live on the water. So, you know, I, in my case, <clears throat> I am, uh, you know, you, you, well, in fact, I don't think I've ever been to Marina Cantina in Gulfport where I wasn't in my boat. So the opportunity exactly. to have boat access is a big part of the cultural experience, actually, that you have going there. But uh, Robert Schwartz and Mark Ar Argler are two uh, real estate lawyers uh, in Coastal Mississippi. My son, Jordan Matthews, actually works with them. Uh, Mark Orgler introduced you to Ivan Spinner, who's a real he estate did. developer in Coastal Mississippi. And, um, and you know, a, a pretty good marriage created there between sort of a restaurant developer and a real estate developer, wouldn't you say? Man, it was, and it happened really fast. Yeah, so like, in, in the like middle, I heard in, in the 15 minutes. You, Let's, yeah. I mean, it was, well, that, it's a really funny story. Well, what, hey, what what is important about that story, incidentally, is the fact, and you said it just then, that you uh, you you made a decision. Think about all the unknowns relative to the pandemic uh, going into the Marina Cantina uh, effort, uh, the the Gupport effort. Uh, so many unknowns, but you guys made the decision to push forward. You developed it. Uh, you had great success from that. Then w one thing led to another. Uh, Ivan goes over and meets with Nikki Mac McElroy in Ocean Springs, 7,000 square foot building, 700 feet of waterfront, unbelievable access. Uh, you go, you, you know, one thing again leads to another. The buildings ultimately purchased. This whole discussion around the entertainment zone, serious renovation and building effort, and then you know this new brand, Marina Canteen Ocean Springs, is about to be born. Man, it's been a hell of a ride for you guys, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, and. Uh... You know, I was in a, I was not in a position to build anything when coronavirus hit. Obviously, my whole company was shut down in 72 hours. But Ivan said, look, man, we've been to the Blind Tiger. We all know the same people. Let's sit down and meet. Me and Ivan and Mark went to his conference room. We sat in there. And after we got done talking about everything but business, we started talking about business for five minutes. And we're like, all right, let's do it. Let's go. And... <laughs> Ivan said, look, I got the building. I'll build it by October. you would be ready to open by October. I did the interior build out and we opened, you know? Yeah. And so uh, Ocean Springs, same deal, you know? When people walk in that building, they will not recognize anything about that building. And there's also a 6,000 square foot back deck with a bar. And yeah, I mean, like you said, it's, um, and that's what, you know, we both have the same goal. It's to to produce the best product we can for that area. And I think Jackson County is going to receive that well. I think, uh, you know, 600 feet of boat dock. Um, and again, fun, clean, casual, fresh food, not out the bag, not imported Asian fish and shrimp. I mean, you know, um, integrity from both the real estate side and the restaurant side. And uh, I think in 30 days, we'll be in there playing around. Yeah, you know what's cool about it? Of course, the, the Marina T Cantina Gulf Board is next to Cowan Road, you know, a lot of traffic. But once you get into the restaurant and, and, and look out over the water and see people coming in and enjoying the culture of that, of what is really coastal Mississippi, you've got kind of the same kind of feel that's going to be, I mean, one of the, one of the most beautiful views from a restaurant, in my view, in coastal Mississippi was from McElroy's right there in Ocean Springs. And you guys have really 
worked hard. I saw the uh, the drone footage that you sent me. You've yeah. really worked hard to accentuate the views to the best of your ability, haven't you? Oh, man, there's no doubt. And I mean, again, you know, it's uh, if you're going to do it, do it to be the best that it can be. And we wanted to do all that on the front end. Yes, it's taken a little more time. But I think that, you know, when guys like yourself, you know, you you've been to McElroy's. You used to go inside and sit down. When you walk out on that back deck, you're going to just be like, oh, my God. Wow. I mean, when Ivan called me, he goes, hey, man, look, let's go look at this building. I said, where? He goes, Ocean Springs. I said, there's no restaurant on the water in Ocean Springs. He goes, yeah, there is. And, um, you know, the first thing we did was cut all the trees down. Well, the trees that they would let us cut down, let me rephrase that. We did yeah. not touch an oak tree. Um, but, you know, we got rid of all the shrubs and we cleaned it up. And I tell you, man, it's uh, if I lived in Ocean Springs, I'd be there three or four times a week in some capacity. Well, I don't live in Ocean Springs. <laughs> I live well, on Back Bay in Biloxi. I also and think, guys, you know, you can you can hop around in your boat in, in, a, in a center console or a pontoon boat or a jet ski. You know, you're 20 minutes door to door from Gulfport to Ocean Springs via water. And, right. uh, you know, our managers are going to have fun with it. We've got some really good employees and um, we're ready to roll, man. I'm, I'm ready for coronavirus to be gone and I'm ready for everybody to be able to get back into the groove they were you know late february of 2020 well thomas we're coming to the end of our time together but first of all let me just say this congratulations on your success thank, thank you for you. investing in coastal mississippi our friend sonny schindler what you've done to sort of revolutionize the, the charter boat situation uh <laughs> and what you've done to help them has been incredible we haven't yeah. in the next in our next visit we'll talk more about that what you've done to get back to the community that's is a whole very story significant. yeah that's a whole story in itself we'll we'll talk about it because what you've done with casa and others is incredible so yeah. anyway it's a it's been great visiting with you we'll get your schedule in the next month or so and we'll pick up the story from here good luck on uh the opening of the ocean springs restaurant and take care my friend okay hey thank y'all so much you bet, buddy. You bet. Right. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Sean Tindall, the commissioner of, um, of safety in Mississippi. See you after this.